want to do background quilting on my pinwheels and they are blocks number 2 and 19 in the quilting diagram. In the background quilting bundle, they're both going to take chevron one horizontal for these two. If you have a five by seven hoop, you'll do them one at a time, but I'm gonna do two at a time in my nine by 14. I want to color sort this so that I can stitch them at the same time and have batting placement block number one, batting placement block number two, batting tack down block number one, batting tack down block number two. So I need to change these colors. I'm gonna click on preferred so that I go to my isochord. And so we've got 3906, Pacific Blue Sunset, Pacific Blue Sunset, and then a turquoise. I'm gonna leave the first two as they are I'm gonna click on this one and just click on the chip down below in the properties panel. And I'm just gonna choose the next blue as a wave blue and tell it okay. And that separates the two different blues so it will stop as a color change. And then I'm gonna click on this sunset and click it and choose the next one, which is pumpkin. The colors of the thread do not matter. I'm just changing the colors in the properties so that the machine knows to stop. I'm going to be stitching both of these with the same color of background quilting thread. So I'm not gonna change this. And now that I've got this one set the way I want it, click off here, I'm gonna click on the design itself on the desktop, not on the objects panel, but in the hoop, I'm gonna click on it and right click copy and right click and paste. And it pasted itself directly on top. I'm gonna to move this down. I'm gonna move this one up. I'm gonna go control A to select all. And then I'm going to go utility and color sort. So look here, we've got five stitches here and five stitches here for a total of 10. So I'm gonna to go to color sort and you can see the design has been reduced by five color changes and let's click new view. That gives us a new tab up here and we went from two designs to one in the object panel. And we have batting placement, batting tack down, fabric placement, fabric tack down, background quilting. That is perfect. That's exactly what I want. I'm gonna go file, save stitch file as, put it on my USB and save it. Well, actually I'm not gonna do that. I'm stitching this on the Luminaire. So instead of saving to the USB, I'm gonna go up to utility and send to Solaris XP1 and I'm gonna call it pinwheels. I'm gonna call it two dash pinwheels and tell it okay. File has been sent to the machine. All right, that's great. I'm about ready to do the pinwheel blocks and this is for the large ones. And this is a traditional block. So there's no embroidery that goes on with this at all. And you need a light background that is um, three and a half by three and a half and they want you to have two pieces of colored background, dark. And I need to do this for all of my pieces here. I had um, just made mine a little bit larger, thinking it was gonna be an embroidery file, and it's not. What I normally do when I trim my fabric is I will stack it up and then go like an eighth of an inch larger on my ruler all the way around. So this is like, three and five eighths by three and five eighths. And I'll trim this. Putting these together is not hard until you try to put multiple pinwheel squares together or the half square triangles together. And then I'll turn my ruler or my mat. And then I'll go right on three and a half by three and a half. And that way I get a nice clean cut on all four sides. 
Before you move the ruler, move the scrap that you just cut. That's a real good habit to get into so that you don't um, have any shifting under the ruler. The more fabric under the ruler, the better. That holds everything and it's a perfect three and a half inch block. So there's all six of those pieces. Here's these three, I need to cut these two. On the back of your light square, you would take a ruler and put it exactly corner to corner diagonally. And then you would take a pencil or a marker of some sort and draw a line. And then you sew a quarter of an inch away on either side of the line. You can do that. Creative Grids has a really neat quarter inch ruler. I like using this. This is a long one because it's made for big blocks. And with this one, you line up the center. There's a line, it's hard to see, but there's a line. And you line up the center on the points. And then instead of drawing the cut line, you draw your sew line. So see, now I'm gonna sew on either side of that. And I'm gonna do that to all of these pieces. Okay, now we're gonna go to the sewing machine. You wanna put them right sides together. We're going to, uh, I'm gonna sew down each side of the line. So I'm gonna sew all of the squares at one time and then flip the whole nine yards around and come back the other way on all of them. I have diagonal seam tape on my machine. I really like this. I'm gonna line up this sew line with the red line of my diagonal seam tape. And you can get this. I'll, I've got it in my Amazon store. But it's nice to have because I don't look up here except when I set the needle, but I, I keep the bottom of my square on that diagonal seam tape. Let me take a couple of stitches just to get started. And then it prevents it from going like this and flying around when you don't want it to. I just get so much better accuracy with that. When I get on a machine and it's not there, I feel like I'm sewing blind. I don't watch the needle. The needle has a job. It knows what it's doing. I watch what I'm doing down here. So my eye is right here. So now you need to clip these apart and you know, you can measure it with your rotary cutter if you want to, I mean, with a ruler and you use your rotary cutter. You don't have to. You just need to cut them apart in the middle. Whatever way you want to do it is fine. And then take it over to the ironing board and you want to do what's called press to the dark. So put the dark side on top and hit it with the iron and then kind of fold it up, crease it. Do not steam these. Do not, do not, do not steam these. They are on the bias now and they will go wonky crazy and you'll make yourself crazy with what happens. I do not recommend steam on half square triangles. Save yourself some trouble. When you crease these, hold it in the middle so that it, it doesn't um, get crazy on you. Okay. Try not to swish your iron. I'm gonna use some Mary Ellen's Best Press. It is a fabric relaxer. It's got fabric relaxers in it. That will help your 
HSTs, your half square triangles, to retain their shape. These things can get so wonky so fast and you'll be like, what happened? This just sets this, it's, it's called setting the seam. I guess it works. <laughs> I don't know. Try to push from the center outward, not from the side. This is just stuff I've picked up over time. Fiddling around with bias. Okay, so let's put these together and these together. It should go dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, like that. That's what we're after, okay? I leave my dog ears on. That's these little flaps right there. And what you do is you put these together and you, so you, because you press them all to the dark, you've got a seam allowance going this way and a seam allowance going this way. I butt them up together like this and get the, don't ignore the dog ears, and get those edges so it's nice and, you should have a perfect little V right there at the top of those dog ears and your little corners here should match, see? Now take a pin and you want to go, you're nesting these seams is what you're doing. See how you can't see the block underneath it from the front? Same goes back here. That's what it should look like. And your little seams should match right there, okay? So you want to press those seams up against each other inside and you want to go in one side with a pin of the seam, this your seam right there, and out the other. Pin in the seam allowance. Don't pin out here. You want to pin those two seam allowances together. Exactly. All right. And if you feel the need to pin down here so they don't get the wiggles, you can do that too. In your seam allowance, in one side and out the other. So you're guaranteed to get a perfect fit. And then so with your dog ears next to your quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to stitch one stitch over that seam line. Yep, we have a perfect point with a quarter inch seam allowance. That's what we want. So there's the top half of that block. And then the bottom half of the block goes like this and like this. But those seam allowances up together, get your corners straight and together. I think I did it right. I just had it turn wrong. My brain, it's early. <laughs> In one side of the seam allowance, out the other. Great. All right. Now, Some people press their seams open. I don't bother. Okay, 
to get these together and get them straight so it doesn't make you stupid is we're still going to nest these seams. You need to be able to see your little V right there, okay? And where that little V comes together, all right, where this diagonal seam and this straight seam comes together, you want to draw a little landing strip because you're going to aim your needle right for that V, and that's right here. That's my landing strip. I make a line. That's my landing strip, right? You take your pin and you put it in one side of the V. You want it right there. And then you're going to take it and put it in the other point right here. And then you need these seams go in different directions. Let's see. I'm going to press this seam this way. You can press these with the iron if you want. Don't have to just yet. Okay. So I've got one seam allowance going this way and one seam allowance going this way. You want to make sure when you're sewing the one on top that you don't have the seam allowance. I mean, either way would have worked, but you want to be able to see your seam allowance. If you can't, you need to flip some stuff around. Okay, so I've got my pin in that point. I'm going to take it, my pin, I'm going to put it in the point across on the other piece and go in straight. Right where they go together. Okay. Now you want to get that pin horizontal and nest those seams exactly together. Don't worry that these edges aren't even. Okay. You want that pin to be horizontal. Keep that pin straight. And you're going to take your other pin, another pin in your seam allowance. You're going to go in one side and out the other to anchor those seam allowances together. And now you can remove your horizontal pin. You got to have the pin horizontal or it won't work. Okay. Now I'm going to take my other. I'm going to take my pin and I'm going to match up these ends because they like to. They're going to bubble around. That's okay. No big deal. And then I'm going to take these ends. I'm going to put them together and I'm going to take a few stitches. Let me get this straight so it's not wonky. I'm going to take a few stitches here. All right. Thumb under, fingers on top. Give it a little bit of a tug. Don't pull it super hard. You're going to aim for your landing strip. Okay. Hit that point. I'm going over by one stitch over my seam allowance lines where they join. I'm going to finish out. And now, if your fabric is way over here, don't worry about that. Gently and gradually come back to your quarter inch seam allowance on the sides. You can make this all work when you're done. All right, let's see how we did. perfect. Look at that. It's perfect. That method works every time, you guys. Every time. All right. Let's do another one. i got to make sure I get my pinwheels right here. This one goes this way, and this one goes this way. Okay. Anchor those seams. Until I figured that out, it I was hating pinwheels. This is another... Um, basic block in the world of quilting. I gotta do it this side. I think right? Yep. Okay. Good morning baby girls. Where's Big Dog? Good morning. Baby. Hi! Did Daddy get you up? Hi, baby girl. Good morning. Good morning. Nothing like a little dog slobber while you're quilting. Perfect.
perfect. Goodness. Goodness. Somebody wants her breakfast. Now we're going to go iron them out and uh, iron them flat and get them so they're not all wonky and they're beautiful. Look at that. Okay. Again, no steam. Right, so we've got these done now, and before I trim them, I am going to put them into a five by seven hoop on top of some batting and do some background quilting on them. All right, I've got my design pulled up in my machine. And we're just gonna go, I'm gonna do both of these in black. piece of tape and just tape it right across the top just so it doesn't get any ideas to move around when it's not supposed to. Remove the hoop and trim away the excess batting outside of the tack down line. I'm going to make some registration marks on my squares so that I can be sure to center my pinwheels. Let's see, I'm trying to take this off. So here to here is four and a half. From outside line to outside line is four and a half. So I'm gonna make a uh, mark at two and a quarter, both sides, and draw a line like that. So it should be two and a quarter both ways. So now I know I need to get these seam lines, top, bottom, and side to side on those registration lines <clears throat> so that the block is centered properly top bottom side to side there we go just like that there we go now it's going to do the fabric tack down Okay, I'm going to cut this jump thread and let it do its final stitch.
all done. Okay. <clears throat> and we're going to take them out and trim them up. Okay, we're going to trim these up to four and a half by four and a half. Okay. Oh, that came out very cute. Very, very cute. You can also take one larger ruler and put it on the outside to give you a little bit more space to hold. I don't, but you can. All right, that looks great. Okay, I'm gonna do one more and then I'll be done with the large pinwheels and I'm gonna do the small pinwheels exactly the same. 